A prosthetic leg should not cost you an arm and a leg. In this series of videos, we're going to be talking about and exploring all questions surrounding cost of a prosthesis, how in the world it costs so much, how do I as a prosthetic provider get paid, along with diving into insurance, different types of insurance, what gets covered, how it gets covered, and also some tips and resources to help you navigate obtaining a prosthesis without going into debt and minimizing frustrations. Throughout these videos, if you have any questions, please drop them down below and we'll be happy to answer them. So let's get started. Today we are focusing on the cost of prosthetics. So I have here just a standard transtibial prosthesis. This one is a pin suspension system. Just drop in the comments your swag, your scientific wild ass guess how much you think this thing costs. What about for an above knee prosthesis? Again, just giving me your swag, your best scientific wild ass guess. Drop it in the comments how much you think this cost. So we're going to be breaking down the cost of just our typical above knee prosthesis. When this is billed out to insurance, there's different descriptions for different aspects of the socket. And each of those aspects have a different dollar amount associated with them. For an above knee prosthesis, there is, first of all, an initial base code. And I'm just looking at Medicare reimbursable numbers. Um, most other insurance companies follow along suit with Medicare. Base price for just your most simple basic above knee prosthesis is, and then there's gonna be additions on top of that. So we're gonna start with the socket here. One of the code sets used to describe it is its material. This is carbon fiber, lightweight material, so there's a code for that. It is also laminated with acrylic resin that helps it be lightweight, get strong. The other thing that we bail out for is a rigid frame with a flexible inner. We do this for our transtibial sockets as well. We have this flexible inner that is removable. Not only does it add a little bit more comfort, but it also helps tremendously with volume fluctuations. And when it comes to this code, you should have at least about half inch material exposed to count it as a flexible inner rigid frame system. There are also codes that are used to describe the uh, shape and style of the socket. So this socket, it's a shield containment and it's a total contact socket. So it's gonna be in total contact with your whole residual limb. There shouldn't be any areas that it's not touching your limb. Those are all the codes describing the socket. Additionally, you're also gonna have your code for alignable componentry. So that basically refers to all these parts and pieces that have all those adjustment screws so that we can make alignment changes, switch out parts, things like that. The only other thing associated with the socket is the test socket. Typically, I'm only billing out for one test socket, but you can bill for two. The next main aspect is gonna be your suspension. So whether that's pin suspension, sleeve suspension, suction suspension, lanyard suspension. So this one is, uh, we did a lanyard and locking. It's in the same category. Now we get into the most expensive of the prosthetic components. One of the knees that we're typically using is the Oser Total Knee that I have done a video on that I'll link it above and put it in the description if you're interested in checking it out. This one has three billable codes. It's polycentric and it has a stance phase lock. It also has stance flexion. And then third, it has extension assist. And the last main componentry is the foot. And the descriptions for feet are horrible and do not allow you to accurately describe the actual characteristics of the foot. Um, but that's a different video. And your last miscellaneous things are going to be uh, your socks. We always provide um, 12 single ply socks and we give six multi ply socks. So three three ply and three five ply. In addition to the socks, uh, liners are also included. We provide two liners with every prosthetic delivery and 
socket replacement. I know I've had questions of how much they cost, so I will have to look up what the manufacturer charges for them. And the last little item that may or may not be included in the cost of the prosthesis is a cosmetic cover, but it really comes down to patient preference. So what is the final total? That's about typical for a above knee prosthesis. It might be a little lower if it's a little bit more simpler of a prosthesis or it could be as high as 50 grand if you're looking at computerized knee, computerized foot and ankle. It just depends and your activity level, the types of things that you're doing and want to be doing with your prosthesis are some of the main things that are going to factor into the different components that are selected and factor into the final price. With a transtibial prosthesis, similar type of thing. A lot of those codes are the same, except obviously you're not billing for any, I hope not. And so you can expect that cost to be a little bit lower. I always say on average about 10,000. You're probably looking at around 7,000 at your most basic, up to about maybe even 12,000, depending on the componentry. I had a patient recently that said he paid $19,000 out of pocket for his transtibial prosthesis. So stay tuned, subscribe so you can get notified when the next videos are going to be rolling out because we are going to be discussing how to not go into debt when obtaining a prosthesis and try to ensure that you're not paying $19,000 out of pocket for your prosthesis.